Hello. Hey, what's up? Oh, that is very loud. Okay, give me one second. Uh, not too much, man. I woke up uh, after work, after I went to bed, and now I'm here uh, uh, yelling, at, yelling at chat. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's not too bad. Just, um, right, are you on push to talk or anything? Yeah. Okay. That's no problem. All right. What you got to say to me, bud? Oh, wait, wait uh, one second. Wait, ISO 1199. Listen. All right. Here. Add me on discord or get out of my chat. Add me on discord to talk or get out of my chat. One of the two, one of the two. Okay. I'll give you this one option. All right. Go ahead. Dark man. Dark hitman. So, um, let's see. I've only been watching for a couple minutes, but I take it you're a Bernie supporter, but you're switching to Biden. I am a Bernie supporter. I'm a progressive voter who sees that Bernie Sanders has dropped out of the race. So I support the second most progressive candidate who was running, which is Joe Biden. That's cool. Like, I don't have any issue with that. Um, I just thought I'd tell you, like, my point of view, which is, like, um, I think that the fact that Joe Biden has taken so many donations from billionaires and corporations, you know, and, like, the fact that he voted for the Iraq war just makes me, like, not trust him at all. Like, I don't think I can vote for him because of that. Um. Yeah, Biden has done a lot of terrible things in his very long and uh, controversial history as the Delaware senator, as the vice president. He's just been a pretty terrible person. I will not disagree with this. Um, uh, but Biden, uh, but uh, Biden has a far less capacity for evil than Trump could ever even imagine. Um, Trump's capacity for doing harm to the country, especially when he has no election next, really, uh, ever, that he'll care about. Um, is going to send him to like another level of tearing down the institutions that we have and our relationships that we have with other countries um, to like a, a point where I can't justify sitting here and being like, well, um, he was, he voted for the Iraq war that he recanted on. Like, I, obviously I don't know if he cared enough, but even the public facing saying, Hey, I don't believe in this anymore is, um, uh, is, uh, uh, is good. Listen, I, so did you add me on, um, did you add me on discord? Like I said, add me on discord or you're, or you get out of my chat. One of the two, um, like Biden has done a lot of bad things and I'm not going to deny that, but in this, and for, I think for most points in time, if I was going to say, uh, if we were in this sort of situation with your most milk toast, moderate Republican, I would probably be like, Hey, I don't really care for voting here. Uh, but when we're in the situation where Trump literally had a, a white supremacist in his administration, I don't know if people have forgotten that Steve Bannon was like a senior level advisor, like the meme like, that was. Stephen Miller, right? Yeah. And Stephen Miller, who was a white nationalist who wanted to yeah, institute yeah, okay. literal concentration camps for Hispanic people to punish them for crossing the border, to separate them from their children and watch them die and squander in cages with no food, with no way to clean, with, uh, uh, with those plastic blankets on a stone floor for months on end because they crossed the border just to punish them. He would have them sent to the gallows if he could. All right. He has actual white nationalists in his administration as a meme. He actually has people from Goldman Sachs in his administration as a meme. OK, he has someone who doesn't believe in climate change or you know what? No, my bad. Even further, he has someone who doesn't believe that the EPA should exist running the EPA. OK, all of these things are far worse than Trump has ever uh, than uh, all, all of these things ha are uh, far greater, um, um, uh, can do far greater damage to the country than Biden could ever even dream of. OK, Biden doesn't know where he is half the time. He can do he has a far less capacity for damage than Trump does in for this country. All right. I can't let listen. All right. I've been politically active for the last couple of years. I can't sit here and watch Trump literally rape the country for another four years just because I don't like Biden. Well, yeah, like I totally agree. Like Trump is just horrible. Um, 
I just don't really see um, Biden being that much better. And like, in, wait, um, like uh, the Iraq War. Okay, wait, just like, in like in which way? The biggest. Well, the biggest issue for me, like it's always been the war, like um, that whole thing has just been like such, you know, that it really like it had a really big big like effect on my mental health like it really fucked me up like for a long time wait like, what did just the iraq war okay so like i don't know like i i've always sworn that i like i could never vote for somebody who supported that and like i just i don't know if i can like say that you know joe biden is really going to be better than trump do you think that uh if trump was I don't know this uh, the uh, Republican senator from New York uh, back in uh, the early 2000s when the Iraq War was being voted on. Um, do you think that uh, do you think that he would be support supportive or against the Iraq War? Um, yeah, if he made if he could make money off of it, he probably would. So he probably would. So we can infer that Trump would have done the same thing that Biden did, uh, or even worse, probably because. He wasn't like, hey, these people attacked uh, America or uh, he had some ulterior motive. Um, I don't know if you ever saw the video of Trump when uh, when uh, the the Twin Towers went down. Do you remember what he said? Um, I might have seen that, but I forgot what exactly he said. So I'm from New York. OK, um, when I was uh, when I was a kid in New York, I was across the Brooklyn Bridge when the towers went down. Uh, I'm a military brat as well, so I have a lot of ties to the military. Um, so all of our all of our uh, wars, they have a lot of uh, um, they have a lot of uh, a way on my life, things like that. So I'm not I don't I'm, I I got a little bit of skin in the game, okay? Like like I said, I was in New York when the towers went down. My parents couldn't reach me because they were on guard, um, uh, uh, watching the city, so they couldn't even come to see me to see if I was still around. But um, Trump, when that happened, went on a radio show, and the first thing he said was, "Well, <laughs> my tower is the tallest in New York now." sounds like trump it not only does it sound like trump it is trump he is a terrible human being and i don't know if someone who was misguided i think most people who voted for it are misguided and now recant and regret their decision to go to the iraq war because thousands hundreds of thousands of uh, innocent people died in the iraq war um that you know them voting for it doesn't mean they have like complete control over what happened uh um having that level of um uh um uh, even even then, like even the most progressive news outlets then were like, we got to get them towel heads, you know, uh, back then. There was a lot of pressure to be for the Iraq war. Uh, yeah, that's a, like a really big thing for me. Yeah, was, even like, the racism that was going on. And, mm -hmm. like, I think, you know, I was about I was 18 when um, we went to war. And like, so I. You know, I remember, like, all the people saying, like, yeah, like, you know, what you said, like, all the slurs and stuff. And it was like, you know, we all knew that Iraq wasn't responsible for 9-11. We all knew that, like, you know, it wasn't really going to go very well. But it was just kind of like, yeah, but we want to kill Muslims, you know? Mm -hmm. So even being in that position, uh, like... The Iraq war votes, all of the, those Iraq war votes are morally, morally uh, uh, um, reprehensible, uh, I will say. I'm not going to say that it's not, uh, but I think we need to put this into, into some context with the pressure that a politician, any politician had to be supportive of it. Um, even then, even, you know, when when Bernie was around, he had some, you know, he had some good things and some bad things to say about it. And his whole view wasn't completely um, uh, like well, uh, I'm, I'm not consistent. Bernie, sure. But I even should, then. Oh, so uh, uh, what about you? Like your political prescription? Um. Well, I don't know. Like, that's like I, I I don't really see that much of a difference between the two parties, except you know, like a few issues. Like I think you know they both take huge donations from special interests. They both do kickbacks. You know. They both support war, you know. There's, like, a few, like, minor things. I mean, like, I guess, like, you know, having Stephen Miller, like, that's a really, like, fucking horrible thing. You know, obviously, I think there's a lot of racism in the Republican Party. So, like, obviously, like, I don't want them in power. But 
like the stuff that, that like the Democrats have done, like yeah, it's I just can't really like uh, justify voting for them in my head. See, um, I agree with like uh, the uh, I, I'm gonna let you know. I agree with like the principle of what you're saying, and uh, when I was like uh, more. Uh, like even a couple months ago, I was kind of like, oh, the Democrats and the Republican, they're like the same thing. Uh, that's just it's just not true. Um, uh, lots of them are lots of their ideas are somewhat uh, uh, same uh, different sides of the same coin, but to very different, uh, very different effects. Uh, the Republican Party is just like a far right party. Uh, and like having them have power in any sort of government will lead to detrimental effects on the on the well being of the people who they rule over, and this is just this is just true, and this can be and uh, this can be true for uh, um, the Democrats too. We can look at Virginia, for example. They have a trifecta. They have the House, the state, uh, the Senate, and the governor in the governorship, and they uh, the workers had to push. They had to fight tooth and nail to get a fifteen dollar minimum wage. And it wasn't even a full fifteen dollar minimum wage. It was a fifteen dollar minimum wage, uh, slowly increased from nine to fifteen over the course of three years. And they even wanted to push that back. Okay, but that wouldn't have even happened under a Republican administration. Uh, um, um, to say that like their uh, the Democrats' tacit support for a fifteen dollar minimum wage and the Republicans' outright refusal or or in like wanting to remove a fifteen dollar uh, remove a minimum wage at all is not the same thing. Um, they're, 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 both, they're both pro-war to an extent, but the Democratic um, base is just far, uh, um, holds their politicians to a much higher standard than the Republicans ever could. They're, they're really not the same. Uh, um, they, have, they do a lot of bad things, but they're really not the same. Know. Well, go ahead, tell me. Well, like when Obama was president, I mean, like, there was a lot of bad stuff i think that went on like the drone strikes and you know all the deportations uh i mean like and like the democrats you know if it were if it were republican doing all those things they would have been you know like you know screaming about it on social media you know like calling for him to step down trying to impeach him but like since it was obama it was like they just kind of looked the other way and you know, like Obama or Trump has just been kind of like doing the same stuff, but uh, I don't know. Like he doesn't, but since he's not like a Democrat, like he doesn't, he gets criticized for it. I'm not gonna disagree with you that there's a lot of hypocrisy on like the Democratic side. I think many Democratic voters and Democratic establishment are very, very stupid. Uh, I mean, that's how we got burnt. Uh, that's how we got Biden, didn't we? I mean, come on now. Um, I like a, a like and the w- walking Hitler. dementia patient who can't uh talk off of a um uh talk off of a teleprompter for more than ten minutes has uh, made it to yeah, the nomination. I think, I think Biden needs to resign, step down, drop out of the race. He'll like, that's probably really what I wish would happen. But if he wins, probably before the midterm, he'll probably step down and let his the uh, middle uh, Middle Eastern woman uh, vice president take over, and then you know all of the wine moms can clap about how. Uh, uh, a brown vagina is sitting in the uh, Oval Office. How cool! Um, but like, uh, but 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 back to what um, like uh, uh, um, like this idea, right? Lots of terrible things happened under Obama, um, but I, I think at least he tried. If you if you just try and boil it down to him just doing all these terrible things, he did do a lot of terrible things, um, and I don't think we should brush over that. Even though lots of even uh, even though in a lot of uh, a democratic like mainstream sort of ideology that uh, criticizing Obama is like sacrilege, right? Or, or maybe like just some sort of like racism. Um, I don't believe that at all. Obama did a lot of terrible things, but they wouldn't be any better under a Republican administration. And I'd go as far to say they'd be far, far worse under a Republican administration. Obama didn't do a lot of great things. A lot of his drone strikes were pretty terrible. Uh, there are lots of deportations, even though I'm not sure where, where I stand exactly like on deportations. I mean, it, uh, I, w- one thing that I heard, right, is that uh, uh, lots of people were complaining about the um, um, the detention camps at the border. You know, you hear a lot about the detention camps at the border, right? Um, are you talking about under Obama? I'm just talking about uh, like, well, on most I'm talking about under Trump, right? Yeah, well, it's both of them. 
Yes, listen. Okay, I'm going to get to that. Both of them had detention camps, right? But yeah. but the detention camps under Trump and uh, under Obama were to sort people to get them to their immigration hearing and to figure out where they go. Trump's concentration camps are to punish people and separate them. People are dying on American Watch. People are suffering in cages for months. People are um, getting separated from their children that they'll never see again. Okay. These two things are leagues and bounds different from each other. And I hate the essentialism saying that they're like the same some way. This sounds like a, it sounds like all of the, um, uh, all of the uh, like moderate voters who are like, Hmm, you say that Nazis are bad, huh? And they do violence. Well, look at this video of an Antifa uh, dude, bro, hitting someone with a bike lock. They're both violent and they're both equally bad. Well, I mean, genociding six million people and hitting someone with a bike lock are, are both violence. I'll give you that. One is yeah, far worse. Like that. <laughs> but that's kind of the idea that that's kind of like what you're saying in, in, in like a different way. But it's kind of the same thing that you're getting to where, well, they both did this thing. So they're both bad. But, so I don't I mean, want to vote like for them. But terrible. one's just far, far worse. And one's going to win. It's not really the same because, you know, like on one side, it's like people advocating for, you know, people to be gassed. And on the other side, it's, you know, someone hitting one of those people with a bike lock. It's not like they're both attacking a minority like Trump is and like Obama. Well, what if that what if the what if the Nazi was a minority? Or I'm, I'm just I'm just mostly speaking from like the the viewpoint of the the person who's the uh, the, the, the centrist the enlightened centrist in this standpoint where they see two violence, two violent acts going on and they essentialize both of them as being the same violence and then say, I'm not, I don't support either of them, which is a tacit support for the, the worst one. Yeah, I see what you're saying, but I don't really see how it's related to the immigration issue. Well, what I'm saying is that both of them had detention camps Trump's was a concentration camp where people are dying and are ruled like completely unconstitutional and are used to punish and separate people where they'll never see each other again. And Obama's was bad, but not that bad. Like they had beds, they had bathrooms, they had water, they had clothes, they could wash their clothes, they could take a shower. None of these things were happening under Trump's um, uh, under Trump's concentration camps. Like I, I, I just can't see how these things are the same. Well, maybe one is slightly worse, but, like, I just can't, you know, like... I don't even agree that it's slightly worse. Like, if you were put in jail and you had to sleep on the floor and you couldn't brush your teeth or change your clothes and you're surrounded by people who couldn't do the same and you're stuck in a cage for an unlimited amount of time, mind you, an unlimited amount of time, uh, you have no clue when you're out. You know when You know how long you're sentenced for when you go to jail. You have no clue how long you're going to be in that concentration camp. You don't know if you're going to see your children again. You have no clue about any of these things uh, in under Trump's uh, concentration camp. These things aren't the same uh, in under Obama's. They they did not have the child separation well, policy. I don't think that they were really that much better under Obama. Really? Did you see them? See what? Like the like the the detention centers. Cause I had to, um, I had to go back to I've figure seen, out this argument. I've seen pictures, uh, like that, um, all the liberals were sharing of what uh, Trump's concentration camps looked like, and it turned out that those pictures were actually from like 2014. Yes, yes, they, yeah, and they did, and didn't look great. But you know what? It looks far worse under Trump because at least they had beds, at least they could change their clothes, at least they had bathrooms, at least they had ventilation. They didn't have those things uh, under Trump right now. They don't have those. And I don't, I don't know if you could go to someone who's like stuck in the concentra- in like the the border concentration camp now for an in uh, in indefinite amount of time with no way to get to um a, an immigration hearing because he like purged all the immigration hearings so they could stay in there for even longer. Uh, who has no yeah, clue like, if they're going well, to see I, their kid again to, to tell them that, that this is better? Be in there at all. Like, I don't think that we should just give them beds. And, sure, know, but that's not the like, whatever. Like, that's n- not what's going to happen. But I mean, if we just all say like, 
like, oh, well, um, I guess let's all vote for Biden now because he's less bad than Trump. And, uh, you know, he's going to give beds to these people who are in concentration camps. Like, that's not really I don't think what we should that's what we should be doing. We should be calling on Biden to resign, to drop out of the race, you know, to get someone who actually cares about these people instead. That's not Um, going to happen, though. Well, I don't think um, I'm just not going to say like, well, everybody has to vote for Biden because, you know, Trump is so bad. He's got he's doing all these horrible things like he does. He's not giving beds to the people in concentration camps. Well, that's not like the only thing I think, like, you know, Trump getting a third Supreme Court pick. That would be the same as Kavanaugh because RGB doesn't have another four years in her is pretty bad. I think you're packing the courts with like white nationalists. Uh, because Trump has the most judge picks out of like any president in modern history right now because McConnell's just knows he can't get any legislation through. So he's just going to at least pack the courts for the next 30 years. I think that's pretty bad. I think him having the chance to uh, roll back um, uh, like LGBT protections. Can you even imagine if like gay rights goes to the Supreme Court and then gets rolled back? Can you imagine if Obamacare goes to the Supreme Court and gets rolled back? I mean, sure, you know, Biden care isn't great. But Biden care is better than being thrown to the wolves of the like in um, uh, um, insurance companies because uh, we decided not to vote for Biden. And then Obamacare now is gone. I think that's uh, like there's there's lots of things. And Biden can be pushed on these things. We can have him um, at, at the very least speed up these immigration policies. Um, so people who were put in a detention camp have their day in court and then are dealt with. Um even that is far better than what's going on now. We can't push Trump on that. The, the, the only thing he'd go even like worse, he's going to like take away blankets and then pack them in like even worse than they are now. And so they all like die. Uh, like uh, like uh, I, I, I just don't see how these things are like anywhere near similar. Also, uh, Pooferstein, thank you so much for the follow. Yeah, like I've definitely heard all these things before. Like we have to vote for Biden because because even though he's terrible, he's going to be less bad than Trump. And I think he can put, like, good things in. Trump isn't going to do good things. Biden can do some good things and some bad things. I think all bad things is better than some good things. things. You don't think he's going to... Go ahead. Like, the fact, just like the fact that, that, you know, he's taken so much money from these special interests, you know, the, the oil companies, the the drug companies, the insurance companies, like he's not going to, you know, turn around and stab them in the back. He's going to turn around, and stab us in the back. Sure. Like, obviously, when the going gets tough, the progressive policies are going to be the ones that get dropped the f- first. Like, that's that's, that's just exactly how this works. exactly what happened under Obama. Because, like, do you remember in the 2008 elections or in the primaries, actually, Obama was saying that he was going to end the wars. He was going to give us a public option. He was going to close Guantanamo Bay, like all of these promises. And then as soon as he won the nomination, as soon as he beat Hillary Clinton, like he did a complete 180 on everything. He was like, well, you know, we can't really close Guantanamo Bay. We can't really close. We can't really get out of Iraq. We can't really do like, all you know, basically everything that he promised, everything that people voted for. Well, not everything that. It was, you know, because of all this money that he was giving. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like Biden, like uh, Obama was very close to the banks, way closer than we would like. Obama didn't do a lot of Obama didn't do great things. But having a Republican to replace Biden. Uh, sorry. To, sorry. I mean, my, honestly, the names are interchangeable now um, to replace Obama wouldn't have been any better. I mean, now we're talking about, hey, let's improve Obamacare, not let's implement Obamacare or like implement some sort of. Uh, a healthcare system like if if we would have just like let all of that go and let like bad things just keep happening and happening and happening and keep holding our nose and holding our nose and holding our nose and thinking like until like we got to go 100 or zero uh or like nothing happens i don't think that's very good or politically effective at least now uh republicans have to expend the political capital to roll back our policies rather than just not having to at all and making it worse them being forced to uh, try to repeal Obamacare was good because they had to at least try to repeal Obamacare and they didn't get it done. So we can hopefully expand it and get a little one step closer to universal health care. Uh, like Obama didn't do like that many great things. But hey, we got the Iraq deal done. 
Like that's a big player. That's a, that was a big ally in the Middle East. The Iran deal. Iran, my bad, not Iran, not Iraq. The, yeah, the Iran deal. That's a big player in the Middle East. That's very good. It's gone now. Um, like, and they may never ever trust us again because a lot of people in Iran didn't trust the U.S. to begin with. And all Trump needs to do is give them a reason never to trust us again. Um, I don't think that's like anywhere near comparable to like anything Biden could do wrong. Yeah, but um, I think that Trump is really just the symptom of the disease, not the disease itself. Like getting Biden into office isn't going to like do anything to change these people's minds. They're, they're going to get even more radicalized. They're going to move even for, further to the right. They're going to become more racist. They're going to blame everything on the Democrats, on, you know, poor people. Everybody that voted for him say like, oh, look, look Keith, they voted for this senile, corrupt, old war criminal. And it's just like not going to help any kind of leftist movement at all. Like people that are actually trying to get, you know, some kind of like human rights, trying to get, you know, like just make lives, make life better for anybody that isn't a billionaire. Um, I do. I just don't. I don't. Well, for one, I used to subscribe to the, well, if Biden gets in, then we're going to get a worse Trump. I don't know if that's going to play out. I don't know what I have no clue where. Um. Well, I'm I have no, that, wait, like, all of, oh, wait, wait, just, just one second. Stuff. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I know. Um, I'm not sure if I believe that. I mean, just, we can just remember from 2016, the Republican establishment doesn't like Trump. They don't like Trump. They still have to, uh, the, the worst sort of dregs of society, Democratic, uh, Republican voters still have to fight to get a Trump in office, even though he's not like a nine, low, 102% approval rating from Republicans. Okay. He's the Republican establishment still don't like him and they'll still fight against him. They'll do that every time. Uh, they don't like him. Uh, and he's very not good for them politically. Actually, they're re he's really not, uh, he's pretty useless. And he lost them the house. He lost them the house. They couldn't run on anything that they did for the last two years because Trump is very shitty at legislation. But th things he does get passed are very bad for the country. Um, I think it. I think it actually a uh, uh, Biden presidency actually can be good for uh, a leftist and or progressive movement in the country because it allows us to now separate ourselves from the democratic establishment because right now we're not separated from the democratic establishment we just get all lumped in as uh the the democrats we're not the democrats we're way better than them they're not our friends when biden's like the president now we can go hey here's the divide between us and them and we can push for policy uh right now we're all just like in the same and then we have to fight for each other to get anything done and we'll have to like always acquiesce to the center because I mean, it's us versus, well, it's us versus the center versus the right. Um, and I just, I, I think that honestly, a Biden presidency would be pretty good for us. Like people, you're, you're going to say that like a Trump presidency will lead to a Biden presidency will lead to a worse Trump. Well, uh, an Obama presidency led to Bernie. And if Bernie won, we could have gotten that in. Um, we didn't, we didn't have the, the political power to do it yet. Well, well, progressive don't have all the power to do it yet. We have very little power in the higher higher ends of government, but it led to Bernie. We have the most progressive society we've ever had, ever. And I don't think we should throw that away. Well, you remember like when uh, Obama was running for president, it was the same. They were attacking him the same way that they're attacking uh, Bernie now, or they were attacking Bernie. Because like you remember the, the whole Bill Ayers thing and um, was it Reverend Wright? God damn America. They're like, oh, this guy's a commie. This guy is from Kenya. Like, it's all the exact same stuff. So I don't really think that the Democratic side has changed at all since then. I think they have changed. They have, the ch they have changed a lot. You know, it's a big meme. Um, uh, there's only one candidate on the stage back then when, when there were like 11. There's only one candidate on the stage, and that's Bernie Sanders. And then there's every other flavor of Bernie Sanders because they all wanted to sound like Bernie because Bernie's the most popular politician in the country. Imagine if he didn't run, you know, obviously he didn't win, but he changed the political landscape forever. Uh, we're always going to be talking about Medicare for all. We're always going to be talking about a $15 minimum wage. Can you imagine if Bernie didn't run and we didn't have we weren't, I mean, in Virginia, we were able to, uh, you know, pass the $15 minimum wage. Obviously, we fight against the centrist now to uh, uh, um, uh, to keep it, but that wouldn't have been even an, even an issue. Uh, 
uh, he's yeah, brought so many progressive policies. Okay, and we have to fight to get it. Yeah, the voters want that stuff, and the Democratic establishment, whatever you want to call them, they're going to do everything that they can to make sure that that doesn't happen. Well, not everything. They'll do a lot. Uh, like I said, I don't think they really care for winning, but uh, sometimes they have to, to pretend like they're still in it. I think they only care about making money, like they argued back in 2016, like their job is to make money, not uh, appeal to voters. But they still have to do a little bit. We still have some control over them. Um, and I don't I don't believe, well, if if this is the case, then it's just like all, well, I, I, I don't believe in like the whole black pill. Like this is, a, this is a whole doomer. We don't have anything to do. Like we push them far enough to have every single candidate from right from right to left, however they fall uh, in the Democratic Party, to sound like Bernie Sanders on stage, and even if they lied about some of it, or even to just get it passed, we can hold their feet to the fire to keep them like on that, and we can get some things done. I think some things done are better than nothing done, or having it all taken away. So, what do you think we should do to hold uh, Joe Biden's feet to the fire? I'm not against withholding our vote right now. I'm really not. Um, but I think that, but I think we just have to make sure they don't call our bluff because at the end we have to vote for Biden because we can't let Trump win. We can't let him rape the country. Um, we can't let him get a third Supreme Court pick. We can't let him keep packing the courts. We can't let him ruin all of our um, national relations. We can't let we just can't let him do that. Uh, it's not politically viable. We can't. It, this becomes a game of whoa, how many people are you going to let die for maybe uh, AOC to be uh, to run for president in uh, 2026? OK, I'm not going to play that game. Uh, it, Trump, Trump is far worse. We have to get him out. But we can hold his feet to the fire now. We can withhold our votes for now. We can um, push for him to get a more progressive policy now. We can do that's what we can do. And while he's um, and while, when uh, when he wins or if he wins, we can do that as well. We did it to Obama. We could do it again. Uh, yeah, I'm saying we should wait till November to decide. Like, for now, we should be calling on Biden to step down, drop out. You know, he's he's obviously got Alzheimer's. He's got a rape allegation. He, you know, he's a war criminal. He's, you know, just like the worst possible candidate they could have possibly picked, you know? That's not true. They we could have picked Trump. Well, no. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I'm saying, like, we, we tried this in 2016. We nominated Hillary Clinton. And, you know, obviously, we all know how that went. And we're trying the same thing again. Like, everybody should know by now that it's not going to work. Like, yes, we should. We're but... just counting on Trump to fuck up so bad that people will, like, all the Trump supporters will just, like, stay home. Or, you know, because I don't think any of them are going to switch to Biden. Like, that's not going to happen. Um. I mean, he doesn't really have anything to offer, really. I mean, because all the boomers are going to vote for Trump. That's, I mean, like, and th that's those are the people that Biden is trying to appeal to. He's always been trying to go after those boomer voters, you know. But I think, like, 80% of them voted for Trump. So, I mean, he's not going to get any, like, we have to get younger voters out to vote. Like, we have to have somebody that's going to actually like call for things that actually are going to help younger people like, you know, Bernie Sanders was because, you know, these old people, they already have Medicare. They already have like their student loans paid off. They already have like all this stuff that, you know, the progressives are asking for. So it's like for them, like Trump is a better pick. I mean, they have no reason to vote for anyone else. Like the other side has nothing to offer them. You sound very black pilled right now. No, I'm not. Like I, I'm. I think what I want to do, what I think, what I'm hoping for is that Biden will step down. Sure, and, and I can. I, I, I mean, I can hope for. Like I said, like like I said earlier, I can hope for um uh all of uh all of our politicians to be banned from a Minecraft server, a time traveler to come back and clone Bernie Sanders and fill up all the spaces so are the United States of Bernie Sanders. That's great. I mean I would love I would love Biden to step down and uh for Bernie Sanders to like come into his place or something like that. It'd be great, but it's not going to happen. I'm more interested in thinking about things that we can do now and things that we can do with a Biden presidency, which we can do a far more we can sorry we can save far more lives. We can do far more things with the Biden presidency than we can with Trump. And I mean, I just like there's lots. I mean, Biden's 
a piece of shit, but he's not the worst. I'm on his uh, I'm on um, Politico right now to look over like things that Biden says he believes. Obviously, he's not going to get anything like many of these done. Obviously, he doesn't care about all of them, but holding his feet to the fire and pushing him for for these things that he's not aggressively against are good things. Here, listen, uh, death penalty, abolish it, cash uh, bail reform, end it. Um, well, well, cash bail, end it. Uh, mandatory minimum sentences, end them. Private prisons, eliminate them. Fif- uh, minimum wage, fifteen dollars. Paid leave, uh, paid sick leave for families. Reparation, well, reparations, study reparations. No politician is really for reparations. Um, charter schools, against charter schools. Uh, cost of college, we're not gonna get free college, but he's for two years. Maybe we can go in and get maybe one year or like an associate's degree for free maybe something like that maybe only uh maybe instead of universities it'll be um a state um like a, a public colleges something like that community colleges something like that maybe that that's way better than anything trump could do student uh student debt um ex- fixed debt relief programs obviously it's not eliminate student debt but that's way better than exacerbating the student debt problems we have now teacher pay boost teacher pay campaign finance eliminate uh uh spending should not be allowed uh, unlimited spending should not be allowed in politics He's not going to uh, cut off his own uh, supply line for food for his campaign money, but he's going to do something. He can do something. Uh, You know, we're a lot more progressive than we were before, and we can hold our politicians a little bit more accountable than we can. We can't get everything, but we can get something done. As I think as progressives, we have two jobs. One is to reduce harm. The other is to push progressive policy. We can do uh, either, and we can do them sometimes both at the same time with a Biden presidency is to reduce harm. To vote for him is to reduce harm. Um, and during his presidency is to push progressive policy as much as we can get, as much as we can did, get. Even incremental changes are f- better than throwing us to the lions. Yeah, um, I don't know. I guess uh, we're just not going to agree on this. Like, I don't, I don't trust, oh, I don't trust Biden to really follow through with all these promises. I think he's just saying it. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like how Obama did, like he said all all these things during the primary. And then as soon as he beat Hillary, it just all went completely out the window. He went like far right, you know. Well, that's essentializing. Oh, come on. Come on. He didn't go far right. He didn't do everything that he that he could. And he didn't fight as hard as he needed to. That this happened. He didn't go far right. We still got Obamacare. Yes, Obamacare was like a right wing uh, uh, cop. Right. But still gave 10 millions of people health care. Um, he didn't do as much as he could have in the uh, Middle East, but we still got the Iran deal. I mean, uh, lots of these things aren't as great as we would like, but they're not like terrible. He didn't go far right. We still got progressive things done. We still got uh, a gay. We still got gay rights. We still got that. We still got a Supreme Court judge. We could have gotten another one, but the right are terrible. He ran against gay rights. He ran against gay marriage. Well, he got it done at the end, didn't he? It was it was the Republican Supreme Court that got that passed. Well, we always well, we've always had a conservative Supreme Court. Well, I don't think having three Trump judges on there would have done the same thing. Do you think that would have? You think uh, that would have happened with three Supreme Court uh, judges with a what is it? What's the what's the court at right now? Like a uh, five four? You think a like six six three Supreme Court would have done that? Um. Well, I, I'm just saying like we shouldn't be saying that Obama is responsible for that. Obviously, he didn't do him. he didn't do everything. Like he, he was he was very against gay marriage. Like I remember that, that like when they asked him during the debates, he said like he he believes that uh, marriage is between a man and a woman. Blah blah blah. Like you know, all the same all the stuff that all the other candidates were saying. Sure, but you still have to like capitulate to it a little bit. At least he had to fake support for it a little bit. Uh, he couldn't he couldn't go completely against it if that was if true. I don't, I have no clue if that's true. I honestly don't care too much. Uh, but that wouldn't have happened under a Trump Supreme Court. I just, it just wouldn't have. Um, it, it wouldn't have happened with the judges. Um, I, I don't know how you can. I don't. I with all the things that could happen. I don't know how you could look like, uh, um, like, uh, like gay people in the face and say, "Hey, I didn't vote for Biden because he's bad." When the Supreme Court goes six three, and uh, um, and like uh, uh, the the gay cake scandal gets back up there, and they rule that you can actually be discriminated be discriminated for due to your like sex and uh like well, gay is, people is are Trump even saying that he wants to repeal gay marriage? No, but he'd put a Supreme Court justice on there that would. 
Like, I know I've heard um, Joe Biden say that he doesn't support it, but I've, I've never heard Trump's actual position on it. Well, he pretended to he pretended to court gay people during the uh, during the, his primary. And then as soon as uh, he got in, he um, he remember he repealed uh, um, he, he stopped uh, trans people from being able to be eligible in the military or something like that. Yeah. Do you think Biden would do something like that? I don't know. I don't think he would. I I mean they're not they're not the same people, they're really not. But um, uh, I mean, like there's, I I'm not like there might you might be able to like find like certain issues that they might not agree on. But I think like if there was like another terror attack or something like if you know something happened with Iran, then it would just be like, you know, World War Three fucking you know like it would I don't, I just don't trust him in that kind of position of power. Um, also, Pooferstein. I don't. I honestly don't even think Trump cares about winning. I think he just cares about his own ego. Uh, if you remember, like back in 2016, there's a video of him that showed like what he looked like when he won. He looked confused and scared. <laughs> he, I, and he rants all the time about how much he fucking hates being president and he misses his old life where he just ate McDonald's and played golf with uh, his rich friends. He, d- I don't think he likes being president. But um, like I don't, I don't agree with you. And it like even if we were in a that situation again. Or like another a world, uh, another um, 9-11 that has more to do with our country and how we view our status and how we view our relationship with our uh, fellow nations uh, than the politicians uh, that would that would happen. We'd be the we'd we'd be the same. Go go gun down them towel heads. Um, American uh, American uh, justice. Uh, we're the policemen of the world. We're going to destroy anyone who stands against us. That's just how our country works. That's how the people work. That has nothing to do with the politicians, I don't think. And I, I don't. I, I, I just don't believe that we can find that many policies that Trump and Biden agree on. Obviously, they both do terrible things, but like, I don't know. Mandatory minimum sentences, eliminate them. Private prisons, eliminate them. Fifteen dollar minimum wage, two dollar, uh, two two year, uh, college, um. Uh, um, rights for uh, um, what is it? Uh, rights for uh, workers. He wants better rights for workers. Uh, support of voluntary buyback program in favor of background checks. Trump isn't in favor of background checks. Uh, weapon registry. Trump definitely isn't in favor of that. Uh, uh, linking o- drug prices. He wants to link overseas prices uh, to our prices to help bring down the cost of health care. Do you think Trump wants to do that? Like there's just so many things that uh, Biden isn't great on, but he's has he's good enough, I think. Well, on some policies, he's good enough. Overall, I, I don't think he's good enough, but good enough to for me to be like, hey, he's far better. Yeah, like, I don't know. Those all seem like, you know, they would be good, but I just don't trust him. I just I, I can't vote for somebody who supported the Iraq war. Like, it's, I just can't do it. Well, I mean, I understand if this is like a real personal thing, but like, I I just don't understand how you would say someone, you can't support someone who would vote, who voted for the Iraq war over letting someone win who, because if we don't buy Trump is a favorite to win. I think in this election, Trump is favored well, to win. No, he is the incumbent. He's the incumbent. He has, he's favored to win. I'm not saying that I want Trump to win. I'm, I'm not. No, I'm not saying Biden that you want. Drop out. I'm not saying that you want Trump to win. I'm saying that implicitly by not voting, uh, you're helping Trump win. I'm not gonna I'm do not, the. I'm, I'm not gonna do the meme where it's like, well, it, even well, you're not voting for Biden, and no other candidate is going to has a shot. This is just true. I I bet all of my savings and everything I own on Biden or Trump winning. I don't know if you'll do the same, but one of them is going to win. Uh, and by not voting for Biden, the person who's favored to win has a higher likelihood of winning, which is Trump. And I think that, th- I don't know how you can say, if that that's your biggest issue or one of your biggest issues, the Iraq war, I don't know how you can say, uh, I'm not going to vote for someone who voted for the Iraq war and I'm going to vote for this Green Party candidate who I do like better, but they're not going to win and someone who is far more unhinged when it comes to Middle Eastern conflict 
it is going to be favored to win. I don't think it's going to be uh, good for your goals, which is I I, I would um, I would assume due to your, uh, you um, going on about the Iraq war, one of your goals, one of your big goals is um, reducing our involvement and our um, aggression in the Middle East. Is that right? Um, here, let me see if I can find a link for you. Sure. I want to watch a video. Uh, sure, a little bit. But um, remember when uh, remember when Biden, uh, when Trump had a really bad polling week, so he just decided to bomb some country in the Middle East. Uh, which one? I forget exactly which one it was, but like, Fox News was like, "Oh, he's so presidential now," and um, he was. Oh, I forget. If anyone has it in chat, there was like a there was a really bad polling week that he had. Trump was feeling really bad. He was kind of depresso. And uh, he just decided to uh, to tell the Navy to bomb some airfield or something like that, uh, just just to like help bump his approval rating. Like I don't think that's something Biden would do. But yeah, sure. What what video did you want me to watch? Well, Clinton did that. Yeah, but we're not you talking about Clinton. When the whole Monica Lewinsky thing happened, he bombed. I forgot what country. Well, he bombed somewhere. Yeah, yeah, and that's all terrible. But I don't think that's something Biden would do. We're still not. Well, that was like how long ago was that? Um, well that was when Monica the Monica Lewinsky thing was going on. I'm I'm twenty one, okay. I don't listen, all right. Anything that happened before I was born doesn't exist. Okay, you're a zoomer. Oh, I'm zooming twenty four seven. I'm guessing you're a little all bit right. older than that. All right, um here. I'll send I'll I'll link this clip in your chat. You're voting for Howie Hawkins. Is Howie Hawkins the Green Party candidate? Yeah, he's probably going to be the candidate. Sure. I mean, that's cool, I guess. Uh, I mean, I don't... I mean, he's he's cool. Um, In our voting system, where third parties aren't even on all of the ballots. I just don't think how this is going to be useful or conducive to like a, the progressive agenda. The ranking what is this? Member on okay. the Committee of Foreign Relations for any opening statement he would like to make. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me begin by saying I think, Major, you provided, have provided and are providing a very, very, very valuable service to your country by coming forward as you have. Because, quite frankly, I think what you've done is you've forced us to come to our milk here, all of us in the United States Congress. I think you and I believe, and many of us believe here, as long as Saddam's at the helm, there is no reasonable prospect. You or any other inspector is ever going to be able to guarantee that we have rooted out, root and branch, the entirety of Saddam's program relative to weapons of mass destruction. Mass destruction. And you and I both know, and all of us here really know, and it's the thing we have to face, that the only way, the only way we're going to get rid of Saddam Hussein is we're going to end up having to start it alone, start it alone, and it's going to require guys like you in uniform to be back on foot in the desert taking, the son of, the, uh, taking Saddam down. You know it, and I know it. So I think we should not kid ourselves here. There's stark, stark choices. I happen to agree with your assessment. A, that diplomacy was picked over inspection-driven confrontation. B, that there's an illusion of arms control that cannot guarantee he will have no system of... So what are you trying to argue with this clip? I can't vote for this man. I mean, yeah, he's bad. Trump is worse. That's just like my whole argument here. I don't like Biden, but... I don't see I don't my how I think of it. If Trump was in this role and Trump was in office, uh, if Trump was the uh, Republican uh, the, the senator from Delaware, I don't think he'd be doing anything better than Biden did. I, don't, I think he'd be doing far worse than Biden did. Like, sure, that's bad. I mean, I would I would even argue that if Biden did sexually assault that like one lady, I don't know what her name is, Sarah something that she even should probably vote if she, if we're in a situation where let's say like i said like trump is a, let's say we're at a um a popular vote situation and that lady who was sexually assaulted by biden um uh um has a friend who would vote exactly the same way and trump is up one vote and they're the last two people to vote and the whole world are looking at their at them do you think that do you think that it would be morally right for her to not vote than to get Trump out of office? Wait, who are you talking about? The one that he uh, sexually assaulted? Yeah, but even let's put you in this situation. I want to I know, I know what your answer is. Like, if we're in a popular vote situation 
you and your friend are the last two people to vote. And Trump is up by one oh, one vote, and you are the last two people. No, no, I, I know, I know it's not. That's why it's a hypothetical. I want to know what you what you would do. And the whole world are looking at you two, and your your friend is going to vote the exact same way as you do. And Trump is the has is one vote up. How do you vote? Because I think as people, as Americans, we need to think about think a little harder about how we vote. I want to know how you'd vote in that situation. That that's not how it works. Like I mean, like if if I had that's why it's a hypothetical. And then, then sure, yeah, I would I would vote for Biden. Why? Like, okay. Why? Because um, I don't think he would put a white nationalist as his advisor. So why don't you use that same logic now? Um, <laughs> I you know like I just think that. Biden is unfit to be president. I don't think that I can vote for him. I think that he's unqualified. He lacks the judgment. He lacks the morality. Like, I don't trust him not to start a war. I don't trust him at all. I mean, I don't know where I stand exactly on the war. But if Trump, who's far more unhinged than Biden, hasn't started a war yet, even though he keeps stumble, keeps trying to stumble into one... um. I think at least, but well, but the thing is, I think at least Biden, if he doesn't have the mental faculties to, and yet somehow he stays in, he would at least have people under him, who know a little bit better than the people Trump has under him. And I still don't understand how you don't use the same logic here. Also, I Pooferstein. Mean, like, it could be like fifty-fifty though. Like maybe Trump will start a war. Maybe Biden will start a war. Like, I don't know. I don't know about all that. But Poof, oh, sorry, just one second, Pooferstein. Thanks for coming by. Hope you uh, see me again sometime. I should be live again tomorrow doing the same exact thing. I appreciate you for being here, bud. Thanks for the follow as well. And uh, the Dark Hitman, uh, Dark Knight Hitman, I'll, I'll let you get the, the last word here. And then I think we should uh, we should wrap this up. But it's been a nice talk. What do you think? Um, well, it was nice chatting with you. Like, um, I'm not, I don't have anything against you voting for Biden. Um, I just don't agree. <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you shouldn't dox, dox yourself, but are you in like a swing state or anything? Uh, yeah. You are? See, see, this is this is the situation. I think you should vote for Biden if you're in a swing state. Come on. You can't, the, you then, even then, you are in basically the situation that I said. You're in one of the few states in this country that actually will decide this election. Do you not see yourself in that situation? Where your vote like has thousands, um, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of more times of more influence of how this election will go than mine or anybody else in this country. Yeah, that's why I'm saying like I don't want to vote for Biden. Like I don't because like if he starts a war, then I don't want to feel like I'm responsible for that. Sure, but if I, I guess if like I would say if like a, a situation came up where a war is probably going to happen maybe or a war could happen and trump was there i think he'd be far more likely to stumble into it than biden ever would but you know i just i guess that's uh that's our thing i'm going to keep advocating for biden uh over trump because trump is just more dangerous uh i understand where you're coming from i feel you yeah, but uh cool. you like, know i don't have any problem with that you yeah, no problem but i just want you i want you to stick around okay i want you to, i want to talk to you again i i do want since you are a one of the like one percent of this country who's going to decide this election. You are very important. You're going to decide like how uh, this country goes in the next like couple of years. You are an important human being, and I want you to, you know, in my mind, make the right choice. But I, I appreciate talking to you tonight. Okay, love you, buddy. All right, take it easy. Take it easy.